Over the years on my channel, I've tested and reviewed many portable power stations as well as solar panels. In this video, we're going to be taking a close look at this Echo Power 200 watt high efficiency and lightweight folding solar panel. We're also going to be putting it to the test. This folding solar panel was sent to me by the company, but as always, you can expect a fair and honest review. If you're interested in purchasing this folding solar panel after watching this video, a link has been placed in the video description area. The company does have a big discount on this product right now, so be sure to check out the link. Let's get started. As you can see, this 200 watt solar panel has a very nice zipper case on it, made out of the same fabric that Jackery uses on their solar panels. This is a rain resistant or water resistant canvas. The difference with this panel that I like compared to the Jackery and others, you are not going to find this fabric on the panel. It's only on the case. The zipper goes from here, down the side, over the top to the handle on both sides. Right over here, you can see a picture of the handle and the molded plastic handle, which is bolted into the solar panel, is very comfortable to hold in your hand. Now the solar panel is not that heavy, around nine and a half kilograms or 21 pounds. The dimensions of the solar panel are 31 and a half inches by 27 inches by two inches thick or 80 centimeters by 68 and a half by five. Easier for you to see how it's connected and not heavy at all. Very, very comfortable to transport this solar panel. Now I'm going to unzip just one side. So let's do this. I'm going to hold this. I'm going to grab the handle and just slide it out of the pouch. This is a rigid panel. Nothing like the Jackery, which is very flimsy or other brands. So that I do like a lot. With the solar panel removed, you can see the frame on this is made out of aluminum alloy or aluminum alloy. The corners are what appears to be ABS plastic. Feels like that. Panel, which I like a lot, is very solid. There's no flimsiness to this panel. And I have a feeling when it's in the sun, you're not going to see any sagging and drooping like many other solar panels as they heat up. The coating that is used on these monocrystalline cells is ETFE, ethylene, tetrafluoroethylene. Now to open this, very simple, there's no lock. You just lift it up, come around, with the panel unfolded you can see that there's a recessed area on both sides which makes this more like a suitcase which is great because your cables can go in between the solar panels when it's folded up rather than have them tucked in a pocket on the outside making the shape of the case irregular so it's much harder to transport. By doing it this way everything stays nice and flat when the panel is closed. Included are warranty cards. The solar panels are under warranty for 18 months. Everything else including a built-in 20 amp PWM solar charger has a one year warranty. What I really like are the supports for this panel. It's a metal support. It's not going to flex like the Jackery and other brands. So this is a huge plus. This folding solar panel has an efficiency of 23%, which is very high. Maximum power output, looking at the label, two at 100 watt. Back in 1990, this solar panel would probably be twice the size because the efficiency back then was maybe 12 or 13%. So now that the efficiency is way up towards 23, it's much smaller. And hopefully over time, as technology advances, we can get that even higher and maybe one day just have a panel on one side here that gives you the full 200. Peak circuit voltage, open circuit is 23.4 volts. That I like, we're gonna be testing all that out. So over here, max power voltage, 19.8 volts. Short circuit current, 10.71 amps. Max power current, 10.1 amps. 
power tolerance range plus or minus 3%, maximum system voltage is 100. According to the manufacturer, the charge controller and the solar panel are water resistant. IP65, according to the manual, according to the manufacturer in emails, they told me it was IP68. So if you're using this outdoors, it's sunny, and then all of a sudden a shower comes through, you're not going to have to worry about any damage to the solar panel. Looking closer here, you can see this clip is bonded to the rear side of the solar panel, which appears to be a silicone high temperature adhesive, and it locks in very nicely. There is a hard plastic or rubberized area here on both sides to keep it from sliding. As you can see in this close-up image, the charge controller is hinged and it's held to the rear side of this panel using Velcro. So once the panel is set up, you pull this away, which you'll see when I go outside to test it. This will hang straight down, plumb, it'll be perfectly vertical. And if it rains, it's still going to be underneath the panel, even though this is rated for water. Of course, you don't want to spray water where the electrical connections are made, but water going over the top should run right off and not have any issues. The control boxes on both of these panels are watertight. There's a seal underneath this cover and it's bonded to the solar panel using the same high temperature silicone adhesive that you see on the opposite side. Hinges appear to be very good, joining the two panels together. Cables look like good quality. Some of you may say it's only a PWM, but the thing to remember is the MPPT, yes, it's gonna give you more efficiency. You'll gain an extra probably 15% uh, output using an MPPT, but for this purpose, of using this to charge your vehicle's battery, charging other batteries, charging your portable power station, having this as portable as possible, I would say the PWM is just fine for this because a 20 amp MPPT is more than likely going to be larger. It may not fit in between when the panels come together and it's also going to be more expensive. The connectors, you have MC4, Anderson, and alligator clips. Right over here is a fuse that connects to your battery that's being charged. Just so you know, the charge controller also has a terminal if you'd like to add an optional temperature sensor on the battery that you'll be charging. In addition to charging eight different types of batteries, it has six different charging modes, diagnose, soft start, bulk charge, absorption, equalizing, and float mode. Now, because the way the panel's set up, both are in parallel, you're only gonna be able to charge 12 volt batteries. I'm pretty sure that this does have the option. It says 12 slash 24 volt. So that's a good sign. So if you wanted, you could make some changes probably behind this cover. If you needed to charge 24 volt batteries, you would place both of these in series to give you a higher output voltage for the 24 volt battery charging. In the event a shadow should be cast onto the solar panel or one of them, there are bypass diodes used to give you a more stable power output. According to the manufacturer, after 25 years of use, you still should have 85% of the power available from these panels. So that would be roughly 170 watts. Okay, you can see the panel is set up facing the sun, perpendicular to the sun. The lux reading, as you can see, is 75K lux. Usually I'll go up to around 80. Today is not super clear. There's a little bit of haze that's bringing it down to 75. So let's go over here, take a look at the readings on the back of the panel. Okay, you can see the charge controller hanging from the back of the panel. This edge sticks out past here. So if it rains, it'll go this way and should miss it. And if it rains at an angle, it'll land here and run off down here. You can see there's a large Anderson connector. You have the clips, alligator clips, fuse for the battery. And if we go over here, you can see we're connected directly off the wires coming from both solar panels. This wire right here, the MC4 is not connected. That takes the power from the panels and brings it to the charge controller. 
So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the open circuit voltage when the solar intensity increases to 75 kLUX. As you can see right here, looking at the digital multimeter, we're coming in at 22.05 volts. I checked it earlier when the panel was cool and it was actually 23.2. So the hot surface does cause the open circuit voltage to drop. That's normal. Here we go, short circuit current. Ten point five, ten point six. Now we're going to connect up the solar charge controller to this battery here in order to have the power go to the controller. Plug this in. And this powered up. With nothing connected to the charge controller, you're going to see the top. It's highlighted. It says LFP, lithium iron phosphate. It says battery type. If you push and hold this for three seconds, you could change it to any of the eight types you see right here. So I'm going to push it and hold it. And now you go between each one. I'm not going to read them because it's very hard to see. There's a glare. But you can see the different voltage settings for each type. That one looks like lithium ion. That says crystal. You have that one. That one. And then back to lithium iron phosphate. Which is right here. Lithium iron phosphate. 14.5. Okay, so now we're set to charge lithium iron phosphate. And in the manual, it explains what BLU, which is blue means, there's different colors, as well as these BO3 numbers. It's indications for what the battery is doing. Connect this up. You can see it's showing a connection. 13.4 is the voltage of this battery. That's showing a charge going in. I switch to amp. 10 amps is flowing into this lithium iron phosphate battery. And you're going to have indications here. It looks like it's showing it's lit up to here with the blue light. So halfway, there's a full charge. So that's charging well. I'm going to let that sit for a little bit, make sure it's working fine. And then I'm going to hook up a portable power station. Pushing the button, it shows you 0.2 amp hours. And there's the voltage, 13.6. Okay, after maintaining 10 amp charge rate for a short while, because the battery was around 80% charged, you can see it says full, cycling back and forth. Now let me connect up a portable power station to make sure that the 22, 23 volts coming off of this charge controller or panels is enough to charge the power station. You can see I have a portable power station connected up and we're getting right around 188, 189 input watts. And that's it for the testing on this Echo Power 200 watt folding solar panel. As you saw, the power output is good and the quality is also good. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.